College game day headed to Columbia, South Carolina in week three for the Gamecocks hosting the LSU Tigers. We ain't here to talk about it today, man. Let's do this. The fanatic. But we keep it 100. Keep it real. That's the only way we know how to be. Talking that sports talk. You know what I'm saying? Straight out of South Carolina. Upstate. 864. Yeah. The F-A-N-A. I see, see the fanatic where we keep it OG. We talking sports, so I call what All I right, see. All right, man, welcome into the fanatic on the Fanatic Sports Network, man. We're here to talk another preview, man. We got the South Carolina Gamecocks versus the LSU Tigers. It's got my guy here, Stat Guy. Man, Gamecocks coming off a big win, and y'all hosting game day. How you feeling on this day? Hey, you know, we feeling a lot better than we were feeling this time last week. I know that. Game day, game day coming back to Soda City for the first time in a decade. Me and you back together, knocking out a preview, man. Just exciting football right now. That's right, man. That's right, man. Game cops coming off a big win, man. And before we jump into everything, man, y'all make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe, man. Share the content too to help it get out to more people. And if you're gonna go to the game, and if you haven't gotten done so already, go ahead and get your ticket, man, and go on to Seat Geek. Use promo code Fanatic Sports and you get twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. If you're gonna go to the game, why not save money anyway, man? That's right. All right, man. But listen, what we say, man? Let's just recap quickly. You know what I'm saying? Last week, uh, LSU took on Nichols after having a short week. Uh, they played uh, USC on Sunday and then they had a short week and took on Nichols. They didn't look too uh, dominating against Nichols. They got the win nonetheless. They did suffer. Uh, injury on top of ha not having John Emery, you know, uh, having an ACL the week before and then losing their defensive tackle, Guillory, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm saying that wrong, please forgive me, LSU fans. But that's a huge blow because they're already, uh, you know, thin at that position, I would say. You know what I'm saying? And then over on your side, the Gamecocks got the big win in Lexington. Yeah, you know, went to went up to Lexington. Beamer Beamer owns Mark Stoops right now. Um, three and one, winning the last three. It all started in 22 with the sunglasses comment at um, media days and kind of like a little rivalry between the two of them. But look, that defense was something special. I mean, you're talking about a defense that looked like a defense you saw back in the glory days of Jadavion Clowney and Devin Taylor and Melvin Ingram and those boys. That front four is disruptive. That's right, man. So with that said, I'm glad you brought up the defense, man. Let's talk about this defense versus this LSU offense. Now, something me and you was talking about, you know, backstage is uh, the weather this weekend. The weather this weekend, it looks to be raining all night prior to the game and leading up to the game, maybe even some during the game. That's going to create like a, a, a mushy feel possibly. And neither of these teams are the greatest at running the ball. Now, LSU's offensive line touted as a Joe early season as a Joe Moore Award candidate. But what I think is they can pass protect. They can't run block, though. So they're not that great at run blocking. So um, my thoughts on LSU's offense versus South Carolina defense. South Carolina's been able to pressure both teams that they've, uh, you know, that they've gone against. They did it against Old Dominion. They did it against, uh, you know, Kentucky this week. That front seven has been living in the backfield. I think you told me it was like some, like twenty something sacks or something like that. So, so tackles through, for loss. Yeah, way. yeah. So through two games, um, nineteen tackles for a loss, ten sacks, ten sacks, six, yeah. six forced fumbles. They've recovered two of them, and they got four interceptions, wreaking havoc. Right, with the combination of Kennard and Dylan Stewart, man, leading the charge on those tackles for loss, man, combining for six together, they've been just uh, a, a menace to opposing offenses. Now, on the other side, LSU hasn't allowed a sack. So, um, again, they're great in pass protection, but not running the ball. Running the ball, uh, they don't do too high. And then, you know, like I said, the week before losing – John Emery definitely did not help that. Uh, I was watching a uh, LSU show, and they said something that I didn't think about. The guy said, even though they have a lot of experience on that O-line, they haven't been forced to learn how to truly run block because Daniels was building them out all, you know, the last two years with his legs. And when you have a quarterback like that, 
then sometimes that that does that does kind of stifle your progression and learning how to run block because he just bails you out every time he runs the ball because it doesn't matter if you can't block he can make a play out of it. Right. Or well, the the one thing that I think though, while they maybe aren't great at run blocking, they only have two negative plays through two weeks, and now again they played Southern Cal and Nickel State, not like those are world beaters up front. But when you only have two negative plays, they might not be getting four or five yards a pop on the run, but at least they're not going backwards. That's true. That is true. And now on the South Carolina defense, we know y'all can get after the passer, but, you know, and you've always told me these last, you know, three to four years, stopping a run has been a, you know, perplexing thing for you as well. So it's going to be interesting to see that you got – a team that hit, you know, over the past couple of years, it's not good at stopping the run. And then a team that over the past couple of years isn't good at running the ball. And then let's mix in some weather. <laughs> and uh, right. then, then, so what's your thoughts on like the ability? I mean, again, they don't have John Emery. They have, I mean, both teams have good players, but they just haven't been able to get it done. Yeah, I think for me, the biggest key talking about this individual matchup is, you know, we, we talked all the time last year. We, we have three bell cows at defensive tackle that we're comfortable with, but we weren't getting pressure off the edge. We weren't sealing edges to force runs back middle, and that's where a lot of the problems were. Now you have two guys that are looking like studs coming off the edge. The defensive tackles are still there, and everybody's just able to worry about their individual job. Um, so I think winning those individual battles has allowed us to do a better job of stopping the run this year, and if the weather's bad, and they're forced to do nothing but run, you're going to see us walk eight or nine down into the box, and I think we're just going to have a field day with them. Well, it's kind of like I had said uh, when I did a preview of Florida State and Georgia Tech. Uh, it's kind of like almost week on week and strength on strength. Uh, and it's crazy how you got that matchup again, week on South Carolina's part for stopping the run, but also week on LSU part for actually running the ball. And then strength on strength, South Carolina actually getting after the passer and having 10 sacks. But LSU's offense having uh, been probably the best pass protecting offensive line in the country and not giving up any sacks. Can you guys, like you said, those edge players, Dylan Stewart, can he force the play up in, you know, force the uh, play up in the pocket and let those D tackles uh, do their thing? And can the D tackles, you know, or sometimes push, uh, push the middle of the pocket and force them into Dylan Stewart? and Kennard. So it's going to be interesting from that, that aspect, man. Now on the other side of the ball, we got the Gamecock offense versus this LSU defense. Gamecock offense definitely looked better against uh, Kentucky than it did against Old, Old Dominion. It's making, you know, baby steps, I would say. Uh, still not great at running the ball, but again, on the other side, LSU's not great at stopping much of nothing, to be honest with you. They only got two sacks at LSU, so it's not like they're there two sacks and I want to say uh, two tackles for loss, and that's it. It's not like they're getting in the backfield either. Right. So they're they're not really creating negative plays. But with that said, South Carolina might lead the world in negative plays because while their defense has created 19 tackles for loss, they've been hitting the backfield 22 times. Right. Through two games. I mean, that's you're you're that's not going to win you too many football games. I've been over 10 plays a game going backwards. But we did look better against Kentucky. Um, I think Rocket looked a little bit more comfortable returning, recovering from the shoulder and knee injury. Um, I'm still expecting a big game somewhere down the line from him. And this would be the week to have it if he's going to have that breakout performance and look like the running back that rushed for 1,400 yards back in 2022. Yeah, and I don't know if now Rocket is that home run hitter, but I think if the weather is what we say it is. He might be the type of bat that you need anyway. He could be that guy that's getting three, four yards of carry, you know, just, just, uh, you know, not Marcus Lattimore. Let's not, let's not get it twisted, but, but Marcus Lattimore in, uh, like in, in the, in the approach where you just trying to chew up clock, chew up yards, get first, you know, chew out, turn out these first downs at the first down and maybe wear down on this LSU defense because with the, with the injury to that tackle, they were already kind of thin up front. So now that just thins them out even more. So they're going to be counting on a lot of young guys. They got, uh, I want to say another D tackle, Sean Washington, who 
was previously at UGA, he went to junior college, and now he's a redshirt sophomore, if I'm not mistaken. He he actually has a lot of potential, but he just hasn't seen the field a lot. So I'm interested to see how that run game looks. Now, uh, USC uh, Trojans were able to throw the ball on this LSU defense. And I will say Sellers looked a little better in Lexington throwing, you know, throwing the ball. I um, mean, you got uh, the true freshman, Maziel Bennett Jr. as a leading receiver, you know, five catches. Uh, I want to say like 81 yards total, a touchdown. And then um, you got actually got three receivers, uh, him with five, another one with five, and one with four. So this is going to be – I want to see if if it doesn't rain or if it's not wet um, at, at, during the game time. I want to see what the passing game could look like because, again, this is – again, you talk about week on week. I would say the strength of South Carolina is the defense. The weak part is the offense, but in reverse, LSU's weak point is the defense, and their strength is the offense. So, yeah, the the big part in this matchup, and for really any game moving forward for South Carolina, is don't let your offense beat you. Don't mm-hmm. don't give the ball away and give somebody a short field. Even if you go three and out, you have a punter that can contend to be an All American punter. Um, and Kyle Kroger, he's going to hit you for 55 plus pretty much every time. Worst case scenario, if you go three and out, let him boom it away, somewhat flip the field and live to see another day. Um, and it's kind of sad. I mean, I think you take some of the risk aspect out of it. And I think you kind of have to be risky in today's game in passing schemes and stuff to try to hit some home runs. But that might not be the the recipe for South Carolina to be successful. It may have to be ugly. And you get lucky on some coverage breakdowns when you do score, but it might not be pretty, but it's going to be what you need to do to win football games. That's right, man. That leads us to our keys to the game and, and uh, get a prediction here, man. My keys, things I'm looking for is, again, I'm looking to see if this offensive line for LSU, who hasn't given up any sacks in two games, against this defensive line of South Carolina, who's gotten 10 sacks in two games. And uh, again, Stewart, I, I have to keep calling him out, man. The dude looks like a pro already. His, his go-to move is that shoulder dip, and he's great at it. And it's going to be interesting to see if they can keep him off of Nussmeyer. The other thing I'm looking at is on South Carolina's offensive side, I one thing, and I think I told you this during the Kentucky game, is I need sellers to have more pocket awareness. While LSU hasn't gotten after the quarterback, if they dial up the right plays, it's like Kentucky was able to sack him twice and, and draw the ball loose on the same exact blitz two times in a row, uh, and he didn't see it coming. You, and then I watched a little bit of the ODU again, and it, they kind of did some of the same thing. He's got to have pocket awareness so that he doesn't, like you say, offense hurt you. So those are my two two things that I'm looking for. Uh, South Carolina's D-line versus this uh, LSU O-line and passing. Uh, situations for LSU and then sellers and his pocket awareness. Yeah, my my biggest key to the game is winning the turnover battle. I think whichever team is able to win the turnover battle probably wins the football game, um, getting some short fields to work with. Um, and then like you, the defensive line of South Carolina versus that LSU offensive line is going to be must-see TV. Um, again, they haven't given up any sacks. Some people have gotten home. Nussmeyer's just gotten rid of the football. But this is by far going to be the best defensive line they've seen so far this year. And can South Carolina create some havoc, maybe some rush throws leading to picks, or maybe hitting us Meyer? And how does he react after getting a shot to the jaw? All right, before we get in here with our keys to the game, if you're watching viewers, let us know in the comments what you think the keys to the game for both teams are. Now, this game is a seven and a half point game. Uh, LSU is favored. Uh, it's a tough one, though, Stat. It's a tough one, man. Um, if the weather is what we say it is, that's like you said earlier, that's going to force LSU to try to run the ball a little bit more. And that actually, I think, helps South Carolina because uh, while they can get to the passer, they've given up some chunk plays here and there on the pass game. And Nussmeyer is not the guy you want to give up chunk plays to because LSU got a lot of good receivers. Um, God, it's an early noon game. If this was a night game, I'm taking the Gamecocks like, to win outright. I'm going to take the Gamecocks to cover the seven and a half, but I'm going to take LSU to win by three. All right. Um, look, man, college game day making its return after a decade-long wait to South Carolina. We're not going to talk about what happened the last time college game day was in Columbia. We blew a two-touchdown lead and got beat 21-20 to by Missouri while we were ranked like 13th in the country. But 
we have had success when College Game Day has been in town, if we think all the way back to the Wayback Machine of 2012 when them Georgia Bulldogs came to town. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope that we channel that 2012 magic. Um, look, I, I think that we have a legit defense, um, which is weird to say after the issues we've had stopping the run the last couple of years, but I think our pass rush is kind of helping in that regard. I think Lenoris does just enough. I'm going to take South Carolina to win, but it's going to be close. I think South Carolina is going to win like something crazy like 21-17. There it is. South Carolina LSU fans, get in the comments. Let us know what your score prediction is. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe for my guy, the stat guy. I'm Coach I. Fan at it. out. Peace. got it jumping like it's that valley. I call my dogs out the pound. Let's go eat. Turn on the fan at it. Let's have a debate. Who really hold down the southeast from state to state? What team hungry gonna eat everything up off they plate?